everybody. It's another episode of Touched by Horse. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host today, Kelly Wubaugh. Hi, Kelly. Hello. Great to meet you. Thank you for, for being here. I can't wait to talk about your important work in the world. Where are you in the world? I am located in Gillette, Pennsylvania, in nice. the Eastern Time Zone. In the Eastern Time Zone. Perfect. Um, how, so you are a recent graduate, actually, yes? You graduated in January? Mm-hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. So good. Of the Touch by Horse program. How did you find Touch by Horse and Melissa? So um, the long of the short is um, I had lost my mother um, that summer before I found Touch by a Horse. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to an equine affair in Massachusetts and Melissa happened to be there. And I got to listen and talk with her. And um, by the beginning of that December, I was signed up for the program and I started in January, 2018. Wow. And um, I've loved the journey ever since. How did you know that this Touch by a Horse Gestalt certification thing was for you? Like what, what spoke to you about it? Um, a lot of it was that you got to do your personal work. Um, something that I felt at that time in my life, I had work to do mm. um, of a personal nature. And um, also it was something that got to be done with horses. And for the longest time since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be able to um, work with horses. And I never thought that was a possibility until I got to know this program. And um, I, I've just been astonished and blessed to, to be part of it and um, thankful that I have completed it and now I can offer it to other people. I would imagine there's a lot of horse people who uh, will, that don't know there's a way to work with horses that if they knew there was a way to work with horse, horses like this, they would be like, wow, I totally want to do that. Yes, for the longest time, my belief was that horses were a hobby mm -hmm. and um, you had to make money to be able to support your hobby. So that's what I did. I went to school to get a decent job so I could support my hobby. Mm -hmm. And um, little did I know that you could partner with horses and do this wonderful work and um, grow from it and help others. And it was, it's just amazing. How did, so you went through the two-year certification and you got to do your own work. Like what were what was uh, impactful or, or how has that work shaped the work you do now as an equine gestalt certified coach? So doing my personal work um, helped me get it out of the way to, to be aware of it, but learn on two levels. Um, and with my work being out of the way, I can be more of a conduit or um, be more aware of how others are interacting in the, in the world. And that just gives me a little bit more awareness and um, I guess knowledge on um, interactions and things that are a little bit more evident to me to help shine the light on those for others. Um, so, for example, when someone comes to me with grief, I have lived it. And hmm. so I have my knowledge, but I've also seen it through example of the program and I can help lend a hand and provide awareness to that person so they can move through their grief process. To walk me back through some of, if you, if you can share, if you want to share just mm -hmm. that grief process for you, like what was the grief and how did you move through it? Can you, can you share some of that? Sure. So um, my mom passed away when I was 28. Um, I got married five days later mm. and um, I carried it around with me. Um, I was in a time in my life where I had to move forward. There was no not moving forward. That's part of life. Mm. And I had a very big day and being having my mom pass away and then having to go through this very happy moment in your life, you aren't able to process or um, think about it like maybe others have time to. And everyone processes grief differently. Um, it's not a time thing. It's not you do this and then this. It's in the moment. And um, when I got into the program, I didn't realize how much time I didn't take to process 
my grief. Um, and I'm still emotional about it because my mother meant the world to me. Mm. But in society, we aren't given that time to grieve. You have to go back to work. You have to pick up and take care of your family. Um, and today we don't, we don't honor that connection that we lost or the, the people that taught us how to live in the world. And it's very, very sad to me that people don't, don't get to have that raw emotional experience or um, they, don't, they don't get to live and move forward because they stop where they are because they don't have the skills or the people to listen. And that's why I joined this program because people need to be heard and the emotions need to be felt. And without, without Gestalt, I don't think that I would be where I am today. Hmm. So, I would imagine that you, having such a personal experience with it, you can see when others bottle or put it, mm -hmm. how do you say it? Put it in a box, uh, put their grief yeah. in. A, put it put in a box in the corner and don't ever look at it again. Yeah, I mean, it's so um, uncommon. Um, in our culture, at least, to to look at that, um, why is that? Why don't we? Why don't we look at it? I feel personally that society is on the fast track, and mm. we have lost that time to to grieve and mourn and to slow down. Um, we you know, either because of our job, we can't take the time or financially, we can't take the time or <laughs> others look down on it. Um, mm. we, we put others most of the time before our own emotions and needs, um, in our heads, we tend to think about what others think instead of thinking about what's right for me in the moment. Right. And mm -hmm. it's, very very difficult for somebody to have that time or process their emotions without being affected by what society thinks or needs from them at that time it's like the deck is stacked against us for i mean there's you gave so many reasons and i've they're mm -hmm. they're so common all of them time um i'm, I'm embarrassed uh, i i should mm -hmm. like i'm selfish if i try to take care of my own needs uh, so many reasons to to not look at it mm -hmm. and put it in a corner. But what do you like when <laughs> I think that that perpetuates something? Like, what do you see as the the downside of stuffing it in a box and putting it in the corner? Like, what what happens when we don't deal with our pain, our grief? We carry it around with us. Um, it affects us in other parts of our lives. Um, when someone close to us like a friend loses somebody if, or a job or um, there's massive amounts of change um, and we fear that change and grief is a multitude of um, ways that it arises in our lives. And um, without dealing with the grief that affected you first, you tend to deal with similar triggers Mm. Um, the same way and instead of moving through them and forward we tend to get stuck in one place yeah i could see this with, see this. probably with like uh relationships um you might you, you may not have the you might feel stuck in a relationship you might feel stuck in a career you might feel stuck in I, there's all sorts of places in life where you just feel stuck and it, i don't think grief is the first place i would think to look Mm -hmm. Right. I would look for things like, oh, maybe it's a new skill set I need, or maybe it's some new uh, perspective I need versus looking at what's buried deep inside, mm -hmm. you know, as the thing that do you, do you feel like that's true too? Like, yeah. yeah, I don't think that I realized how many places that grief touched or could touch my life. Hmm. Um, I feel that we think it think of it as a one track thing that grief is just in this this lane when grief can reach out into other lanes yeah. um totally and if i would never looked at the grief around it i don't think that i could process 
other joyous things in my life or, um, you know, I had my first child after my mother died. And I think that would have been very different for me to experience if I was in that grief and thinking all the time, well, I wish my mother was here. Um, mm. I don't think that I would have enjoyed um, all the little moments we have together and all the skills that she taught me to be a good mom. Um, so I think that if I didn't choose to look at that, I would not be able to raise my daughter in the way that my mother raised me yeah. or, yeah. you know, be the wife to my husband that I am. And that sort of those, those areas of my life. I think about just the uneasy feeling when it starts to rise up, right? Like when you start to feel it rising and you're like, ah, oh, here, there's that feeling. And you're like, I don't want to feel that. Yeah. I, can't, I can't, I don't have time for that right now. I can't feel that right now. Mm -hmm. and, and then we just push it back. Is, yeah. That's what the horses are really good at is they're mm -hmm. there to support you during this time. Mm -hmm. And when the horses are working as my partners in this wonderful amazing work hmm. um they're there to support you and you tend to be able to let it go or release in a, a better manner for yourselves and the horses actually help you release and get rid of it they do something called bleaching um which you don't get to see every session but um they just take that energy that's sort of i think of it as dead energy that you're just hanging on to that's weighing you down and they help you release it back into the atmosphere mm -hmm. and um, you just become lighter and more freer and are able to just move forward and honor those connections that you have lost and are grateful for you you move into i think you move more into gratitude and mm -hmm. other emotions that just help you move through life in a yeah. in a more elegant meaningful way. Yeah. So how, how do we begin to make peace with, I don't think that's the right way to say it, but how do we um, be with, so that we're not a prisoner to the grief we have that's stuffed in a box? How do we begin to mm, live a fuller life, uh, even if we've had grief? I think it's looking at the, all the, the positives or um, the good things that you had from that connection in your life um that relationship or that job the skill maybe the skill set you learned and now is allowing you to move forward or upward in a in a job position or um the skills and the things that my mother taught me um you know she taught me to be very independent um so i can do everything on my own i can change a car tire i can take care of horses i you know i can do heavy labor i can read a you know read you know i can do so many things um, that she taught me but i also have those traditions that she taught me that i carry with me that are part of me because of her um so it's, it's giving you another lens to look at in your grief um so you're not stuck at looking through the negatives like they're not here um i can't do this because of this um all those negative or things that weigh you down instead of looking yeah. through that lens, change the, lens, the focus or the lens. Yeah. There you've mentioned, uh, before we hit record, you mentioned the word just honoring mm -hmm. your grief. Yeah. What does it, what does it mean to honor the grief? I believe that honoring grief is taking the time to look at it, um, experience it, mm -hmm. um, thank it. Um, and, just be aware that you went through that process um and then you know you sort of change it and and move and grow from it and you know it it's a part of you still like we don't get rid of it but we honor it yeah i would imagine the more that you look at it and feel it and be with it without trying to maybe without trying to fix it change it ignore it but just being in the presence of it um, mm -hmm. takes some of the scariness out of it or the sting out of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think part of why it seems scary is that we don't look at it and we, mm -hmm. there's no written book about how grief is supposed to go. So there's, 
possibly some fear around it for certain individuals. Um, especially if you've grieved the loss of a job, there's a fear of what's next, how am I going to support myself, those sure. sorts of things. Um, when you honor it, you sort of have a different lens and can can continue to move forward with the skill set you have. And it's it's cool to honor your grief. Yeah, that's not, you don't hear that every day. Hey, it's cool to honor your grief. Yeah. Yeah. But it does make something more available. I, we've sort of talked about it, but just I'll ask it and you can tell me what comes up for you. But mm -hmm. when I start to honor my grief and be with it, what are the new mm, possibilities that start to open up? Like what becomes available that wasn't there before? Um, I think it's different for everybody, but I think um, things move into that, that space that you've held on to grief for so long. So more love, more gratitude. Mm. Um, you mm. know, I, for one, I think this happens to a lot of people, but we don't, we don't continue to use this. Um, we we're more thankful for things more we're, it shifts for us because mm -hmm. death is final and we don't know what death is on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so people have more gratitude for things. Mm -hmm. However, I think being in that fast lane of society, we, we don't stay in that position of gratitude and um, <clears throat> thankfulness and being in the moment, um, mm -hmm. being, um, like flying by the seat of your pants or, you know, whatever it may be for you, because we just, society, you know, it just, yeah. it takes yeah. over and mm. we forget that, that impact. And by doing equine gestalt work and looking at that grief and keeping it present in the moment, we get to process it in a way that I think stays around a little bit longer. Um, you're more, just more aware of it and in the moment. And when it comes up, like you saw, I, I released my emotions yeah. and I'm not afraid to do it. Um, my mom meant the world to me and um, hmm. I will, I cry like that in front of complete strangers, obviously, but um, hmm. I'm so thankful for the time that she spent with me and you know, the things I've said this before, things that she's taught me and the traditions I have and the place I am today because of it. Hmm. Well, I would imagine um, not everybody's in a spot where they're ready to be mm -hmm. with their grief. Um, but no. for those that are, how do they, how do they know? How do you know you're ready to move on? How do you know you're ready to move through the grief? Um, I wouldn't say they're going to know. Um, and it's different for everybody. I keep saying that, but um, I truly believe that sometimes when you have work to do, um, it'll come up when it's ready. Mm. And um, you just have to, to take that deep breath and, and go for it um, and come do your work. Um, and when it's ready, it'll come up. And sometimes there's other things that need to be cleared before you're ready to do that. And other times it's, it's in the forefront and needs to be taken care of. Yeah. Well, I would imagine people listening to this who have grief in their background, um, whether they've dealt with it or they haven't dealt with it. Maybe they've dealt with it, but there's more there to deal with. Like there's more to move through and they can feel that. Mm -hmm. um, or they haven't dealt with it yet. How do people reach out to you to begin to move through this kind of work. It sounds like you can really hold space in for them to move through this with your gestalt work. Yes. Um, so I have a website. It's www.longviewequinegestaltcoaching.com. Um, I'm also located, on, located in Facebook and um, Instagram. And all of those have my website attached. And uh, um, phone numbers, email are all located there. So. Nice. Beautiful. Kelly, thank you for this important work. Grief is such a um, paralyzer. Like I think it can paralyze people in life if they don't uh, move through it. And I love that you're tackling this with great vulnerability and transparency and courage and what important work. So thank you. Thank you.